TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Global tensions over prospects of an all-out regional war continue to run high. While Jerusalem is weighing its retaliatory options, Tehran threatens with a devastating response. The International Monetary Fund warns over a prospective spike in oil prices amid Mideastern tensions, while the EU announces its intention to slap Iran with additional sanctions. Global tensions over prospects of an all-out Middle East war continue to run high amid Israel's preparations to retaliate against Iran that after the Islamic Republic unabashedly launched successive salvos of over 350 projectiles toward Israeli territory. Irrespective of prospects of a direct war between Iran versus Israel, however, Jerusalem's political leadership has acknowledged that Tehran's blatant aggression will not go unanswered with a variety of options on the table. One thing has to be clear. Uh, after the brutal attack uh, coming straight from Iranian territory into the state of Israel, with all the respect to the fact that we managed to protect ourselves, defend ourselves, thanks to our IDF uh, and to our Air Force, uh, we can't pretend that it will pass unnoticed. We'll have to react. Iranians will know that we reacted. And uh, I sincerely hope that it will teach them a lesson that you can't attack a sovereign country just because you, you, find, it, uh, you, you find it doable. Different options are on the table. They've been presented to the war cabinet. They've been discussed. And uh, as I've said, the moment, the moment the retaliation will come, it will be quite clear to the Iranians and the rest of the world that, uh, that uh, Israel will continue defending itself whenever necessary from whatever aggressor will be facing. The Israeli parliament's Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee chairman went on to stress that while Israel is not in the business of revenge, it will make it clear to the Iranians, alongside other adversaries, that no one ever will be able to attack Israel without consequences. We are uh, calculating the possible responses from the Iranian side. We are listening very carefully and with a lot of attention to the messages and advice we are getting from our allies, who were very instrumental in helping us to uh, defend ourselves from the Iranian uh, missiles and drones. Uh, having said all that, I think I won't surprise you if I'll tell you that the uh, most important task of any democratically elected leadership, including that of Israel, is to protect its own citizens. And we'll act accordingly. We'll, we are not in the business of revenge. It's not the question of revenge. It's the question of making it quite clear no one ever will be able to attack Israel without consequences. Amid preparations for the looming retaliatory strikes, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, during a meeting with troops along Israel's northern border, emphasized the need to remain focused on defending the homeland. Also, if the war expands to additional sectors, your mission does not cease. Defense at all times. The Iranians attacked us in an aggressive way with over 500 projectiles. Not a single cruise missile reached Israel, not a single UAV reached Israel, and from over 100 surface-to-surface -surface missiles, only four landed in Israel as a result of our preparatory work with our partners. It was a very qualitative action of the IDF to include all of its systems. Jerusalem's top defense official went on to declare that the Islamic Republic will not succeed in altering a paradigm shift as part of its malign aspirations for the region and beyond. They will not succeed to materialize a new equation of deterrence versus Israel. Israel Air Force aircraft are operating everywhere. The skies of the Middle East are open. 
Any enemy that will fight us, we will know how to strike it, wherever it may be. From this perspective, it's a show of capabilities of the highest standards, that of the Israel Defense Forces and the State of Israel. It is worth noting that during the day, the top diplomats of both Berlin and London arrived in Jerusalem for talks with Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, among others, during the course of which both Germany and the United Kingdom pledged support for Israel's right to self-defense while condemning Iran's blatant hostilities. Well, look, it's right to be in, here in Israel today to show solidarity after that appalling attack by Iran. We made clear our views yesterday about what should happen next. But we also said Israel is an independent, sovereign country and gets to make these choices. We hope, continue to hope, that as they do so, they do so in a way that is smart as well as tough, but is also does as little as possible to escalate this conflict. But I'm also here to focus back the um, eyes of the world onto the hostage situation. 192 days those people have been held. Hamas should release them now, and there is a good deal for them on the table. The only reason the conflict continues in Gaza is because they won't take that deal. It is important to know that the Qatari Prime Minister, during a joint press conference with visiting Romanian Prime Minister in Doha, acknowledged that the talks have reached a dead end between Hamas and Israel, labeling it a stumbling block. The negotiations are between moving forward and stumbling, and during this time we are passing through a delicate phase with some stumbling. And we are trying as much as possible to address this stumbling block and to move forward to put an end to this suffering that the Palestinian people are passing through in Gaza as well as to retrieve the hostages. Returning to Israel where Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu during a cabinet meeting addressed his separate meetings with the four ministers of Germany and Britain and thanked both nations for their ardent support for the security of the Jewish state. I am now coming from meetings with the foreign ministers of Great Britain and Germany. Last night I spoke to British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, and soon I will also speak to other leaders. I thank our friends for their support for the defense of Israel, and I say this, both support in words and support in actions. They also have all kinds of suggestions and advice. I appreciate it, but I want to make it clear. We will make our own decisions, and the state of Israel will do everything necessary to defend itself. Meanwhile in Tehran, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, during a boastful military parade, showcasing munitions similar to those that were used in last weekend's attack on Israel, declared that any Israeli retaliation will be met with an immediate Iranian response. If the Zionist regime makes the slightest move to violate our territory and harm the national interests of the Islamic Republic, they must understand that they will face severe and heavy response. The Iranian president went on to level a threat to the Islamic Republic's neighbors against deepening relations with Israel and claiming that the RGC and Iranian military were a better solution for their security. I tell the countries of the region that our military forces, our armed forces, our army and IRGC are guarantors of security. They are peacemakers and bring pride and authority to the region. They are completely trustworthy forces, so instead of establishing relations with the Zionist regime and betting on a losing horse, rely on your own assets and on Muslim forces and rely on our powerful army and IRGC. Meanwhile in Brussels, following requests by the major powers within the European Union, EU Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell announced that his team will work on a proposal to extend the sanctions regime against Tehran. First, as expected, everybody, a strong condemnation of the Iranian attack, a strong unity about it. 
Also, the member states reaffirm their commitment, the commitment of the European Union to Israel's security. And third, we remain united in the objective of uh, avoid further escalation and call all actors to show restraint. Anti-Iran sentiments within the European bloc are seemingly rising, particularly in light of Tehran's active support for Russia and the war against Ukraine, as well as its facilitation of attacks against freedom of navigation in Bab el-Mandeb and adjacent waterways by the Iranian proxy Ansar Allah, or the Houthis in Yemen, which has negatively impacted European economies. And while the EU launched a task force to contend with the maritime attacks by Iran against commercial shipping, commander of the mission emphasized the need for double the naval assets to contend with the Iranian threat. At least twice the, the, amount, the number we have now, in order to be able to deploy at the whole part of the area of operations. And I have here to state also that the, the area of operation includes the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aden, the Arabian Sea, uh, the Sea of Oman, the Persian Gulf, and the Northwest Indian Ocean. Well, three separate Western task forces are operating simultaneously to confront the Iranian threats. The International Monetary Fund announced during the World Economic Outlook conference in Washington, D.C., that in the event of a regional escalation between Iran and Israel, oil prices are expected to spike globally. We uh, looked at a scenario where we would have more uh, geopolitical tensions that would result in elevated oil prices and energy prices and uh, uh, shipping costs. And what we find is that this would lead to higher price pressures in the global economy. There would be a higher inflation. There would be lower output. And roughly, uh, the estimates we have for a sustained increase in oil prices by about 15 percent uh, would be an increase in inflation globally of about 0.7 uh, uh, percent. Uh, so there is some effect there. We are not in that scenario right now. Our assessment of what has been happening with the tensions in the Middle East is there's been some increase in oil prices, but it's too early to say whether that would be sustained. Uh, and it's not in our baseline. But we certainly looked at that scenario very carefully. It is worth noting that in recent days, a number of countries which are heavily reliant on Middle Eastern energy commodities have separately announced preemptive measures by seeking out alternative oil and gas markets. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to encourage you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Moreover, if you're blessed by our productions, which are exclusively donation-based and as such broadcast entirely free of charge, please consider making a donation. You can do so via our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you during our next update. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.